Isn't it crazy how some of our biggest lessons are the things that didn't work out any way like we thought they were going to? I know this may sound crazy, but take just a minute and think for me of that thing that you really wanted, that you thought was going to be the next step for you in your life, in your business, in your personal life, whatever it is, and it didn't work out and you were devastated. And now you look back and think, man, what did Garth Brooks say? Unanswered prayers, right? Sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. Sometimes the biggest blessing in our lives are failed dreams. I'm really excited to dig into this topic. My name is Amber Furman, and this is the More Than Corporate Podcast. Welcome to the More Than Corporate Podcast. I'm Amber Furman, recovering perfectionist and serial accomplisher. If you're anything like I used to be, you've been living your life thinking that if you accomplish enough stuff, you'll finally find the success you've always wanted. But what if it's not about accomplishing more stuff? What if it's about accomplishing the right stuff? I believe you don't find success. You create it by intentionally designing the life you want and having the courage to get out of your comfort zone to live your design. I went from doing what I was supposed to do to doing what I love to do, and now I get to help others do the same. Keep listening as I chat with inspiring people who make it their mission to live their best life every day and learn how you too can live the life you've always wanted. Before we jump into this topic, I just want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by Success Development Solutions and the Design Your Life Book Club. If you are somebody who wants accountability in reading, if you want to explore new topics of books, if you want to connect with amazing business owners and entrepreneurs, get support on implementing what you read and then connect with the author and build your circle of influence even more, then the Design Your Life Book Club is meant for you. Click the Calendly link in the show notes below, and let's jump on a call and see if it's a good fit for you. All right. Unanswered prayers, failed dreams, whatever we want to call it. What is that thing for you? And you might be sitting there thinking, Amber, I don't have one of those. Like, I hate it when shit doesn't work out the way I want it to. Bear with me, though. I have so many, so many things that were supposed to be the thing that made me happy. They were supposed to be that next step. They were all I wanted. And then I didn't get them and I was devastated. And thank God they didn't turn out because look at what I have now. The biggest one that is completely staring me in the face right now is what I thought my legal career was going to be. All through law school, I had it set in my heart that I was going to be a public defender. It's one of the things that brought me to Vegas. My research had dictated to me that Vegas had an amazing public defender's office, that they were well-paid and well-supported, and that they fit the culture that I wanted to live in. And I knew deep in my soul that I was going to be a public defender. I had taken all the classes I needed to take in law school in order to make this happen. I had focused on criminal law in law school, hadn't really diversified a lot. That's the first lesson, right? Putting all your eggs in one basket. Even as far as my student loans, I wasn't even caring what loans I was going to take out because I was only going to have to pay them back for 10 years because I was going to be a public defender. So I moved to Las Vegas. I intern at the public defender's office. I get to know anybody, everybody. I see this life and I'm like, man, this is it. This is what I want to do. I take time off to study for the bar. I take the bar. Five months later in May of 2013, I get my results and I pass. Now it's time for them to hire me, right? That call that told me that I was not getting the job at the public defender's office was one of the most devastating calls I've ever received. What was I going to do now? This was the way my life was supposed to work out. I remember thinking, okay, I got to pay the bills. We're in 2013 in Vegas. Not a lot of legal jobs are opening up. People are recovering from the 2008 recession. It had just hit Vegas. They were still a little gun shy. I got a offer to work as a law clerk for an immigration firm. And I thought, I'm not a law clerk. I have a law degree. I can go to court. I'm an attorney. I'm going to look for something else. There wasn't anything else that was offering me the position. 
So I ended up taking this job as a law clerk with this immigration firm. And I knew deep down in my soul that this was going to be a temporary thing because the public defender's office, the next time it came up to apply, I was going to apply. I was going to get the job. I wouldn't have to do immigration anymore. I could have that public defender dream that I thought I wanted. So I'm watching for openings to pop up and the public defenders opens up that they are hiring. I fill out my application. My heart's not in it the way that I wish it was. I didn't interview well and I didn't get the job. I keep watching because I know that I'm meant to be a public defender, right? I had been told by somebody, Amber, this is a competitive job. If you don't get it your first time or your second time or your third time, keep trying. Many of the people that worked in the public defender's office had tried multiple times. So that was pre-framed for me. I applied. I felt really good about this. This was my third application. I felt really good about it. I got through my first interview. I got called back for a second interview. And in between when my second interview was scheduled and when I was supposed to actually have the interview, my boss at the immigration firm that I told myself was temporary had informed me that I was going to be speaking or arguing in front of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. For those of you who don't know how the legal system is kind of structured, immigration is federal and you have the immigration courts. And if you lose there, then you go up to the Board of Immigration Appeals. And if you lose at the Board of Immigration Appeals, then sometimes you can appeal to a federal court, which is the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals here in Las Vegas. There's 13 circuits throughout the United States. And the only court that's higher than the circuit courts is the United States Supreme Court that does not hear every single case. So basically what I have been told by my boss is that I am going to be getting an opportunity that attorneys who have been practicing for five or 10 years would kill for. But I have an interview at the public defender's office coming up and I had to make a decision at that point in time. Do I go to the interview knowing that if I go and get offered the job and I don't take it, that I may not get offered it ever again? Or do I withdraw my application so that I can have this incredible opportunity to argue in front of an appellate court that I may never have the opportunity to do again? I decided that this immigration job that I didn't think I wanted was going to provide me with opportunities that the public defender job that I knew was my future could never give me. So I withdrew my application and I thought I'll apply again later. I'll apply again later. Time went on. I left this immigration firm. I started working for a criminal defense firm. And I, I said, you know, I'm leaving immigration behind. I'm going to do criminal defense. That's what I've always wanted to do. It's not the public defender's office, but it is criminal defense. I'll be good. And within a couple of days of being there, they said to me, Amber, we'd really love for you to build an immigration firm for our practice. And I thought, no, I was leaving this behind, right? I don't want this. It was a lucrative package. And at that point in time, I still thought that money ran the world and was going to make me happy. So I said, okay, of course. I build this immigration firm. And in doing so, I challenge these beliefs in myself that I haven't been practicing long enough to start a law firm on my own. I don't know what I'm doing. There's no other immigration attorneys here. How do I, who do I bounce ideas off of? Where do I find information? What if I'm not enough? I was put in a position where all of these things I had to face, but I was able to do it with the comfort of somebody else with the financial backing. A couple of years went by in building this and growing this immigration firm, and I decided it was time for me to step out on my own. I built my practice, Firm and Law, in 2017. It was an immigration and criminal defense practice. It still is. Um, we are just passing four years, which is amazing to me. And every single day I look back and I think, God, what would my life look like if I was at the public defender's office? In 2016, before I quit my prior job and started my own law firm, I had had the meltdown that we talk about on this podcast, the realization that my I'll be happy when moment is a total myth. And I had started challenging myself in other ways. Over the last five years, I have loosened the identity that being an attorney holds on me. I have explored other options. I've started this podcast. I've started the coaching business. I've started events. The Design Your Life live event was just a couple weekends ago, and it was fantastic. 
all of those things. Would I have them as a public defender? Would the county allow me to host a podcast where I talk about personal development and growth and things that aren't legal related? Would I be able to um, start the coaching business and have a second business, a third business? Would I be able to control my schedule and have the freedom that I have right now? If that dream I thought I wanted had worked out, what would my life look like? And is it what I really wanted? So I'd love for you to think about this for just a minute and take an opportunity to step back and say, what is it that I've been holding on to? What is it that was supposed to work out that didn't? Have I let go of that yet? Have I understood yet the reasons that I didn't know at the time for why this didn't work out? I don't know if I'm going to be practicing law forever. People ask me all the time if I'm going to let go of the law firm to continue to grow the coaching business. And I am a true believer that I don't have to let go of either, that I can do both and I can do both well. You can do both. You can do both well. You don't have to pick one or the other. With that being said, I don't know if I'm going to be practicing law forever. And, you know, the, the people in my life who haven't gone through this before that are really close to me, look at me and say, how can you just throw away all of that time? How can you throw away the investment that you made in law school, the time and money and resource and energy investment? And I look at what being an attorney has created for me, the experiences it has given me, the insight that it has given me. The credibility that finishing law school gives me, knowing that I can do things that are hard, knowing that I can finish things that many people don't think they can finish, that that comes with it skills and experiences that I wouldn't have otherwise that allows me to be a better coach, a better trainer, a better speaker. And that all of the things that didn't work out for me the way that I thought they would have truly ended up being the best blessings ever. So I want to ask you, what are your failed dreams? The things that didn't work out, that were supposed to work out, that was supposed to be the way your life was. What do you have now because those things didn't work out? And what's the trade-off? Are they really failed dreams or are they the best blessings ever? My name is Amber Furman. This is the More Than Corporate Podcast. Remember, you have the ability to design the life that you have always wanted, and you owe it to yourself to get out of your comfort zone and live it. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the More Than Corporate Podcast. If anything that was said during this episode resonated with you or provided value in any way, it would mean the world to me if you would head over to iTunes and leave a rating and review for the More Than Corporate Podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I'm really looking forward to connecting with you. If you'd also like to connect, I've created a Facebook group that is full of amazing people who also make it their mission to live their best life every single day. If that's that sounds like something that you're interested in. The name of that Facebook group is Success Center. Head over there, request to join, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.